Hello and welcome to 21st Century Music. Thank you for joining us today. We're discussing a most intriguing topic. Can an analog synth sound different to a digital synth? Many musicians will swear that they hear the difference. And uh, currently a lot of the manufacturers are obliging them by constructing analog instruments at considerable cost. So the big question is, what is the difference? The question is intriguing because we can't hear digital at all. So all digital synths have to ultimately convert whatever is their output to analog. So basically, in actual fact, we're comparing analog with analog because analog is what we hear. So the, the real question uh, and what people have focused on over the years uh, has been discussing the mechanism by with which by which the two signals are produced. And uh, there's a considerable difference in the way the signals are generated but at the end of the day it's important to realize that we are actually comparing analog waveforms in both cases. Now one of the intriguing arguments that's advanced is that because the digital system uh, is a conversion system there is a certain amount of uh, granularity in the reproduced wave. In other words what they're trying to tell you is that you can't really get a smooth sine wave out of a digital system. There will be a certain amount of noise riding on top of the wave which is the actual change or step value in the digital to analog converter. Every digital to analog to converter has a certain resolution and also it has a certain sample rate and therefore they're saying that the idea of a pure sine wave coming out of a digital synthesizer is in fact crap. Is this really true? And the answer to, to the question is it is sheer nonsense. Why is this? Well, the, the, the situation really revolves around frequencies, okay? The sample rate and resolution, if they're high enough, produce such a small amount of granularity that an analog device, a capacitor, a filter, an analog filter very often sits on the output of your digital to analog converter and simply smooths out those ripples. So they actually do not exist at all in the ultimate waveform. And um, in this video, we're going to transfer to the lab at the University of West Indies, where I work, to examine some of these waveforms so that you can see for yourself that it's hype. Now, I would like to suggest to many of the musicians purchasing this, who may claim to hear some difference in an analog device, that perhaps they're not being 100% truthful in comparing the, the two. It's, it's very easy to... To, to do a digital synth into something that it excels at and an analog synth into a sound that it excels at but what we should attempt to do is create the identical waveform with both animals and do a double blind study with people who claim to have good ears to actually be able to prove conclusively that they can identify one from the other everything that I've seen on the internet suggests that we're having an unfair comparison. No real uh, scientific evaluation of two synthesizer technologies producing exactly the same waveform and being listened to by two people would be able to in fact determine the difference. Now that's a lot of talking but we're going to go to the university now and examine some waveforms, shall we? Today, 21st Century Music takes you to the University of the West Indies where we're going to do some experiments on our Roland FA-06. 
right to the electronics laboratory where we're going to do our experiments today so that we can keep this on a very scientific and professional foot. The absolutely most perfect sine wave came with variation B. Wave variation B. I'm going to try and uh, expand it a little bit to check the purity of it. I'm pretty impressed with the purity of the sine wave. As you can see, it's pretty sharp and uh, pretty well balanced in both halves of the waveform. Notice the smooth waveform as seen on the analog oscilloscope. And remember that all it takes is a capacitor and a resistor acting as a low pass filter to completely remove any digital noise that rides on the sine wave. The most accurate triangle wave shape came with variation C. Here we're looking at the triangle wave uh, with variation C. I was a little surprised by this particular square wave form because it would seem that the problem is not to produce a perfect square wave because that's the easiest thing for a digital to analog converter to do to flip between two uh, logic levels so therefore I would conclude that the square wave coming out of this synth has intentionally got this wave shape so as to add additional character to the sound. The most accurate square wave I could get was with variation B. Variation B gives the most accurate square wave representation. The most accurate sawtooth seems to be with variation A, wave variation A. Check it out there, that is the sawtooth wave in variation A of the FA06 synth. Okay, here we have the narrowest pulse. You might just barely be able, I've turned up the intensity, you might just barely be able to see the pulse there. Now as I rotate the pulse width, you should be able to see that the pulse widens, widens almost into a square wave. Well, you can see it widening there, for sure. And uh, now you're seeing the ringing down here at the bottom, so that's about as wide as it goes. But it's not that um, obtuse, it's not completely square. But if we switch to a higher... We can see here that even when we have it at zero for pulse width, we don't have a complete square wave. This is with the waveform PW square and um, wave variation A. If we come down here now and we change it to wave variation B, we see that we have that and wave variation C gives us that. But which doesn't really alter the duty cycle of the wave. All it does is introduce some more ringing on the flat part of the wave. Okay, so that's PW square. Now here we have super saw, which you really can't see because it's not a single wave, but that's how it looks on the oscilloscope. I have done some extensive testing, which is actually not a part of this video today, and uh, I was absolutely amazed that a couple of my Roland synths were actually able to generate a purer sine wave than our lab oscillator. Now that's interesting, huh? You have less total harmonic distortion with a digitally produced sine wave than you do with an actual analog sine wave. How is that possible? Is that possible? 
We welcome your comments. Post them below. And I'd love to hear from other professional engineers who have taken the time and trouble to research this particular idiosyncrasy. Thank you for watching here on uh, 21st Century Music as we seek to debunk myths, expose realities and perform objective scientific analysis. Having been involved in electronics for over 40 years and teaching at the university for about 20 and uh, in addition to that I have also been involved in music and had a fascination with music for most of that time it pleasures me to be able to help my readers understand what is really going on in the world of the technology. 21st century music exists to help you, the musician, make better music utilizing the technology and you're being advised by somebody who has considerable experience in the, fil in the field of electronics.